Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another modern gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Heartless Troll deck as we're trying to ramp out Clankbridge Troll using Heartless Summoning. So the Troll is a 5 mana 8-8 with Trample and Haste. So that's uh, pretty powerful but there are a few extra things worth noting. When a troll enters the battlefield, target opponent creates three O1 white goat creature tokens, so that's a pretty big drawback. And then at the beginning of combat on our turn, any opponent may sacrifice creature. If a player does, we have to tap the troll, but we get to gain three life and draw a card. So a very interesting card that, of course, if it uh, didn't come with the three goats would be very powerful. But even with the goats, getting to gain some life and draw some cards is not a bad deal. Now the way we're trying to offset the drawback of the troll is by playing the full playset of Plague Engineer, which is a 3 mana 2-2 two -two from Modern Horizons with Death Touch. And when the engineer enters battlefield, we can choose a creature type and creatures of the chosen type your opponent's control get minus one, minus one. So you can simply play engineer, name goat, and then all the O1 tokens will die on the spot and uh, you can freely attack with your troll if you want to. Of course, your opponent can still tap down the troll, sacrificing other creatures, but that's usually a pretty good deal for you. So that's the major combo in the deck. The way we're trying to make this go a bit faster is by playing the Heartless Summonings, which are two mana enchantments. Creature spells we cast are two mana cheaper, and creatures we control get minus one, minus one, so that's the big drawback. But uh, in terms of giving the troll minus one, minus one, it's not that big of a deal since we still get a 7-7 seven, seven trampling haste. And uh, the plague engineer is still a 1-1 one, one death touch, so it can still trade off for opposing creatures and the effect still happens. So we don't really mind shrinking down our team all that much to be able to get this in play much sooner. And then we're also playing the full playset of Grey Merchant, which is a 5 mana 2-4 when it enters the battlefield. Each opponent loses X life and we gain X life, where X is our devotion to black. So we count all the black mana symbols on the permanence we control and add those up and that's our devotion to black. So if we play Grey Merchant just by itself, it's going to drain the opponent for two if the Grey Merchant is uh, still alive when the trigger resolves. But of course, we've got uh, plenty of black permanence. A nice one in the deck is also Phyrexian Arena, which is a three mana enchantment that at the beginning of our upkeep, we draw a card and lose one life. So we can basically draw two cards per turn and uh, life gain from Grey Merchant kind of makes up for all the life we would lose to the Phyrexian Arena. So those two play very well with each other. And then we also have two copies of a runes card demon as another nice curve topper 6-6 six, six, flyer that when it enters the battlefield we can search our library for any card and put it into our hand so we can uh, search up a second runes card demon or find a gray merchant to drain the opponent out and of course with heartless summoning the runes card demon only costs five mana so it's a lot more feasible to cast a demon in time so let's take a look at the rest of the deck list here. At one mana we've got some of the usual suspects. Fatal Push has a very efficient removal spell. Couple hand disruption spells with two copies of Thoughtseize and four copies of Inquisition of Kozilek, which is a bit less painful against the aggressive decks. Then at two mana we've got a playset of Heartless Summoning. Usually only want one copy in play. Can always discard additional copies to Liliana of the Veil. Or in the sideboard we've got Collective Brutality, which we can escalate and discard additional copies that we don't need. And then we also have two copies of Knight's Whisper to draw two cards at the cost of two life. Since we are kind of a combo deck that needs to assemble certain pieces, we need our Heartless Summoning, the Plague Engineer, the Clankbridge Troll. So having extra ways to draw more cards on the cheap is nice. And the Grey Merchant helps us offset all the life we lose to these various effects. Then at uh, 3 mana we've got our two copies of Lilian of the Veil, which can act as a nice removal spell, making target player sacrifice a creature, and then the plus one for each player to discard a card. We can easily discard extra copies of Heartless Summoning, or uh, if we've got a Phyrexian Arena going, we usually have a lot of extra resources that we don't mind discarding. And then of course the ultimate can also win us a game. We've got our four copies of Phyrexian Arena, don't really mind having multiples in play, thanks to the Grey Merchant. We've got our four Plague Engineers, which besides comboing with a troll, are of course great against a lot of the creature matchups in Modern. We've got our four Grey Merchants, our four Trolls, and our two Runescar Demons. Then taking a look at our mana base, we've got the full place of the Field of Ruin to have a chance against the big mana strategies, maybe take out a creature land 
two copies of Nykthos Shrine to Nyx, which can add a ton of extra mana and also works with Devotion. Then we also have two copies of Urborg to turn our lands into swamps, so that our Field of Rune can still tap for black mana, for example, and plays well with our Silent Clearing, so we can tap it for mana without having to pay life. Silent Clearing, of course, a nice land that we can sacrifice if we're flooding out to draw a card. Baron more we can cycle for one mana to draw a card, so a bit of Flood Insurance. And then both the Silent Clearing and the Field of Rune are great Revolt Enablers for Fatal Push as well. And then uh, 12 Basic Swamps to go with all the non-basics. Then taking a look at our sideboard, we've got two copies of Nile Spellbomb as Graveyard Hate, the full playset of Collective Brutality as a way to find burn decks and can also come in handy against some of the combo decks out there with the discard mode. We've got our two copies of Damping Sphere, which is great against Storm combo decks and Tron decks. We've got the full playset of Fulminator Mage as well, which can come in against control decks and the big mana strategies. We've got one Ashok, which is pretty versatile, can both be used as graveyard hate or to stop search effects from the big mana strategies, trying to search up certain lands. And finally, two copies of Whip of Erebos, which also saw some play alongside the Grey Merchant of Asphodel, a great combo with it, since we can get it back from the graveyard and get the Enter the Battlefield trigger again, even if the creature goes away end of turn. And also great combo with Runescar Demon, being able to get the Enter the Battlefield trigger once again. And giving all these big creatures lifelink is also a nice way to fight aggressive strategies. So yeah, that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Uh, hand looks reasonable enough. We've got some early interaction with Inquisition. And then hopefully we can pick up some uh, mid-game plays. Facing turn 1 Kurt Ape, so an aggressive zoo deck perhaps. Alright, glad to have Inquisition instead of Thoughtseize. Let's have a look. Double Narnum Renegade, so it's a bit of a Revolt Zoo deck. Not a Kurt Ape, Lightning Bolt. So, let's take a look at the creature types here. This is an Ape. These are Elf Warriors. Gotta think about what to name with Plague Engineer if we don't name Goat. So let's take the Renegade and then maybe the next Inquisition can take the Lightning Bolts. So your opponent fetches Sacred Foundry, plays Renegade, and the Curd Ape. So they've basically emptied their hand here. Lightning Bolt and one unknown card in hand. And yeah, that's a lot of power and toughness in play. So let's Inquisition again. And their hand is Reckless Bushwhacker and Lightning Bolt. So Bushwhacker can be a powerful finisher for them. But does need Surge. Currently our opponent only has two lands. And if we take the Bolt, they might not have another spell to cast for a while. So yeah, let's take the Bolts. Leave them with the Bushwhacker. And then I'm probably going to cycle this Baron more end of turn. Looking for Heartless Summoning to maybe get this Grey Merchant in play. So taking 6 down to 12. Pick up a Nykthos. So let's play Nykthos and play our first Engineer. Now I won't be able to kill any of the opponent's creatures by naming the same creature type twice, but for now I guess I'll name Ape to shrink down the Curd Apes. And it's going to be Lightning Bolt on Engineer and then Bushwhacker with Surge. So this is going to hurt. In fact... Uh, we might just be dead here, taking 9 plus 2 is 11, down to 1. So opponent had a very explosive start. Multiple 1-drops into removal spells and uh, Bushwhacker to top it off. And there's a summoning, but it might be too late here. Alright, so let's go on to game 2 here. Where being on the play, of course, also makes a big difference. So this is a matchup where I don't mind Brutality, even though it doesn't kill the... Um, Curd Ape or the Renegade with Revolt. It's still just a nice tool to just take out some smaller creatures, maybe Goblin Guides, and gain a bit of life. And this is probably a matchup where we don't want all the cards that make me lose life. So both Thoughtseize and Night's Whisper are potentially cuttable. Phyrexian Arena is also potentially cuttable, but we still need a bit of uh, card advantage. So I could see shaving two Arenas. Also make room for the Whip of Erebos, which should be decent. And for Brutality, so we've got six extra ways to gain a bit of life, interact with small creatures. So yeah, let's give this a shot. 
This hand's not ideal. We don't have any cheap interaction, no inquisitions, fatal pushes, brutalities. Those are the cards we really need. I do get to play turn two summoning, but then I don't have a turn three play lined up. Yeah, this is probably too sketchy. All right, this is better. Definitely keeping. Now it's still a bit awkward with his one Baron Moor and Field of Ruin, not letting me play Inquisition on turn one. So I might want to ditch one of the Inquisitions as I probably won't have time to play both before my opponent empties her hand, and then just uh, play a tap Baron Moor, say go, and next turn I can decide between the summoning or Inquisition. It's gonna be turn one, experiment one. All right, well, that's probably gonna grow outside of the Plague Engineer's range. For now, I think I'm just playing the summoning to give me the option of at least playing Engineer or Grey Merchant next turn. There's a Curd Ape, a growing Experiment 1, attacks for 2. And no second land for my opponents. Alright, so they are pretty likely to have some Lightning Bolts in there. So the Plague Engineer is not super likely to stick around. Experiment 1 is a Human Ooze, so not too many overlapping creature types, so not the best uh, Plague Engineer matchup. So do we Plague Engineer or Inquisition? When my point's stuck on one land, casting Inquisition is not super impactful. So I guess I'll play Engineer naming Ape, since I would rather trade off Engineer for Experiment 1 and um, prevent a bit of damage from the Curd Ape instead of the other way around. And pass the turn. Opponent attacks, I'll offer the trade. And we only take one damage, so essentially using Plague Engineer as a one mana Removal spell. Ferex in Arena could be nice alongside Grey Merchant if we draw some lands. Probably just gonna Plague Engineer again and do the same thing as last time. Naming Ape since I would rather trade off for the Renegade. And it's gonna be two mana for Burning Tree Emissary. Into Burning Tree Emissary into Tarmogoyf. Well, that's a pretty powerful turn. Still no third land. I can Brutality, kill one Burning Tree, maybe take a look at my opponent's hands and take away a Burn Spell. So I'm definitely casting Brutality. The question is, how much do I escalate? Am I going two modes? Am I going three modes? I'm guessing the arena is probably going to be too slow, so I can discard that and the Inquisition. So let's go all three modes, take out a Burning Tree, and discard Arena and Inquisition. My opponent did indeed have a Burn Spell in hand, a Tarkas Command, Sinner Vines and a Devil still in hand, and pass a turn. So I'm still at 18, but that's about to change pretty quickly. A Tarkas Command also could have prevented the life gain, so pretty happy that we were able to take it. But this Vexing Devil is... Um, Somewhat problematic as well, since the 4-3 I don't have a great answer for. So I probably got to take 4 here, but uh, I really need a land here for a Grey Merchant. There it is. It's going to gain me 3 life and leave me with a 1-3. And we know our opponent still has the Sinner Vines in hand, which can also blow up my Whip of Erebos. So I'm going to have to draw plenty of Grey Merchants here to hope to stabilize. Tarmogoyf a 5-6 in the meantime, so I guess I can block one of the two powered creatures and take 7 down to 1. And her opponent drew another Tarkas command. So yeah, pretty savage beating from the zoo deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And don't think I can keep a one-lander, even though we have basically everything we need. I'm gonna need a second land for the summoning, and then still a third land for Troll and Liliana. I think I'm gonna have a better chance if I mulligan. Alright, two lands and a bit of interaction with Thoughtseize and Fatal Push. Double Arena. So the question is, do I put an Arena on the bottom or a Grey Merchant? Probably one of the Arenas, but there's definitely matchups where I would want both. And we'll lead with the Thoughtseize. And we're up against, looks like, Affinity with uh, and Soul Artifacts. And even have the Darksteel Citadel to enchant, so Fatal Push is not going to be able to kill it. Double Galvanic Blast as burn spells, Ornithopter, Signal Pest, and Springleaf Drum. 
So I guess I just gotta take the Ensoul Artifact since I don't have a great answer for that otherwise. And of course a drum could make blue mana. Could try and take the drum to slow them down in their mana development. But there's plenty of mana sources they could draw. The Ensoul Artifact is kind of a more unique effect. So there's Ornithopter. And the Spring Leaf Drum. And then they can play their Signal Pest as well. Leaving them with two Galvanic Blasts and one Unknown. Alright, probably just gonna Fatal Push the Signal Pests. I could do it now, I could wait in case my opponent has like a Steel Overseer that they're gonna play next turn. Might be worth it to take one damage over it. Probably. So I'll play Swamp Sego. And it's gonna be a Volt Scourge instead. So do I care more about Volt Scourge or Signal Pest? I guess I don't really care about my opponent gaining life as much. And um, they kind of deal the same amount of damage. So I'll kill the Signal Pests to prevent one damage now. And maybe more in the future. Opponent can tap it for a Galvanic Blast to my face. Leaving them with one Blast and one Unknown. Alright, let's play our Phyrexian Arena. Slowly build up our Devotion for Grey Merchants. It's gonna be another Volt Scourge. So we'll take one. Not the fastest clock from our opponent, but there's a lot of top decks that can change that drastically. Alright, pick up a couple of lands. So next turn I get to play Grey Merchants and drain the opponent for four. Plague Engineer would be a pretty nice draw with double Volt Scourge in play. It's gonna be a Hangerback Walker for one. Take two down to ten. So I'm at a virtual six life because of Galvanic Blast, make that five with Arena. So we are getting pretty low, do need to try and stabilize here. Alright, pick up another Inquisition. If I Inquisition, my opponent can respond and cast Galvanic Blast targeting me. So that doesn't really accomplish all that much. So let's just play Grey Merchants. Now they could also Galvanic Blast a Grey Merchant. Then I would drain them for two less. And not have a 2-4 in play. But my opponent's deciding to hang on to it. Another Signal Pest. Now that is an issue. As they have a lot of evasive creatures that the Signal Pest can enhance with Battle Cry. So now would be a good time for Plague Engineer. Another Inquisition instead, so I can cycle my Silent Clearing. And a Troll, which I currently can't cast. Also giving my opponent uh, three Goats with Signal Pass in play is somewhat dubious. So do I force the issue on the Galvanic Blasts? I guess I might as well. Don't really want to attack with my Grey Merchant since I don't want to give my opponent the chance of having a bunch of Thopter tokens to go with Battle Cry. So they're gonna Galvanic Blast me, and Pond has no cards left. Alright, let's uh, pass a turn. So on the board I'm taking 5 damage down to 1, and then I guess I'm dead to my Phyrexian Arena. So yeah, I guess we're dead here. So yeah, I needed to draw something in those 6 draw steps that we had, but we drew a bunch of lands and Inquisitions. So battle cry happens, and I'm gonna take one damage before my regular draw step, so there's no chance of like drawing something I could cast in between. Not that I have any instant speed life gain that I can think of. So let's move on to sideboarding. Don't have any dedicated affinity hate, but four main deck plague engineers are quite good against uh, the style of affinity deck my opponent is playing with a lot of one toughness creatures. Collective brutality can't hurt. Could even consider Fulminator Mage to destroy some lands that turn into creatures. Whip of Erebos could be serviceable. Uh, what don't we like as much? I don't mind the Phyrexian Arena as much. Liliana's pretty poor since my opponent tends to go wide. And I could see shaving two copies of Thoughtseize, even though my opponent can have some high impact four mana cost cards that I can't take with Inquisition, like Experimental Frenzy. And then I could see shaving two copies of Night's Whisper as we just brought in the full place of Brutality as another 2 mana play potentially. So it's always nice to take a look at the curve after sideboard as well. So yeah, this seems fine. Let's give this a shot. Would like to be on the play. This hand could be okay if we draw Heartless Summoning. Without it, 
I guess I just need to draw a black source for Plague Engineer and Arena, which are both decent, so we'll give this a shot. And then hopefully pick up a land. Field of Ruin also nice against the creature lands. As we see Blink Moth Nexus into Signal Pest. I think I'm just gonna Brutality one mode for now. Slow down the buildup of artifacts. Don't quite want to discard anything for a chance to take an instant or sorcery. The affinity decks usually don't have a ton of those outside of Galvanic Blast. It's going to be a Steel Overseer, which we can answer. If I didn't have the second Brutality, I probably wouldn't have killed the Signal Pest, but since we did, I felt okay about it. Could also play Plague Engineer naming Construct to take out the Steel Overseer. Although usually prefer to name Blink Moth with the Engineer, so they can't attack me with the creature lands as easily. So I think I'm just gonna play Brutality, kill Overseer before they get to untap with it, and then next turn maybe play Arena. And then, of course, we're hoping to save the Engineer to name Goat with the two trolls in hand. It's gonna be Volt Scourge into Cranial Plating. All right, that's a scary card. Although not too many artifacts in play at the moment. Let's play Arena. And against decks where we expect them to have removal spells, it might be better to play the Troll first and then the Engineer, so we can take out the Goats all at once, instead of having my opponent kill my Plague Engineer in response to me playing the Troll. Spell Skites, well, at least we've emptied most of our removal spells already, so the Spell Skites not too impactful, but it is an extra artifact for plating, so we'll take four from the Vault Scourge. All right, Inquisition and land. I think I'm just playing the troll here. And the next turn I can go Inquisition plus Plague Engineer. Opponent's probably going to take at least a hit here. All right, never mind. Opponent decides to let me gain three and draw cards, so we picked up a second arena. It's going to be all that glitters. Interesting. All right, well, that's uh, pretty effective here. And now it doesn't die to my uh, Plague Engineer naming Imp, if that was a consideration. Turns Blink Moth into a creature to increase both the artifact count for plating and for all that glitters, so it hits me for 10 here. That's a lot. I'm right, gonna need some good cards off the top. Fatal Push and Grey Merchant, that definitely counts. So I could Plague Engineer, Push and Inquisition, but that doesn't keep me alive. As my opponent can redirect with the Spell Skite, they'll still have enough uh, artifacts slash enchantments in play to kill me with Volt Scourge. If I play Grey Merchant, I would gain 6, so that could keep me alive. So let's start by attacking with the Troll and see what my opponent does. Alright, they're still happy to make me draw cards. In their spot I would probably just take the hit. Picked up a Baron more. I'm probably better off just playing the Grey Merchant. Like, sure, I could draw into... Another Fatal Push, and then kill both Spellskite and Vault Scourge, which would solve my problems. But that's not super likely. I think I'm better off just playing the Grey Merchant, getting an extra mana source in play. And then next turn we can make some additional plays, hopefully for still alive. And play Baron more. And say go. Mem Knights. Boost up Vault Scourge by two. And Soul Artifact on the Vault Scourge, now a 15 powered Flying Lifelinker, and they can activate the Blink Moth to kill me here as well. Alright, well, we got to do our thing, but our opponent kind of went over the top here, which is a little bizarre for an Affinity deck, but they did it regardless. Did have the Fatal Push, but opponent had the Spell Skite. Let's see what we would have drawn had we cycled, would have drawn Heartless Summoning, which also would not have uh, made the difference here. All right, so we took a loss against Affinity, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and this hand's pretty decent. We get to play turn two Heartless Summoning, turn three Troll, maybe turn five Demon, and take it from there. Facing turn one Mystic Sanctuary, could be all sorts of fancy new decks using the new land from Eldraine. Definitely a very powerful addition for Modern, being able to fetch it up and put a spell back on top. Serum Vision still doesn't tell us exactly what our opponent is playing. Sulfur Falls. Pretty happy to just play the summoning, hopefully no spell snares. 
resolves. So next turn I have a couple of options. Probably want to wait on Grey Merchant until we build up our Devotion some more. Snapcaster on Serum Vision. The second Heartless Summoning is actually not terrible, since I've got a lot of expensive cards in hand. But if I play both, then of course my Plague Engineers would die as soon as I play them, which is not necessarily ideal. So I might be better off just playing Phyrexian Arena here, build up my Devotion, start um, drawing extra cards, and then I can maybe hope to play Troll and Plague Engineer in the same turn, which is a lot more effective. Playing Troll right now would also be okay, but I kind of dig playing Arena. And enchantments are going to be tricky to interact with for the blue-red deck. Snapcaster gets in for two. And that's a lot of Grey Merchants. Let's play Troll first. Of course, could get uh, countered by Cryptic Command here. And it's going to be counter bounce my Heartless Summoning. So now I'll have to spend another turn replaying the summoning, which Definitely slows me down with this hand, as we've been missing a land drop too, despite drawing two cards. And yeah, still no lands, so this is definitely an issue. I think I want a Knight's Whisper just to hit my land drop, otherwise I can't really make any progress. Alright, now that I picked up my land drop, I think I'm okay going for the Inquisition here, and then pushing the Snapcaster Mage, just so I didn't take too much damage instead of playing the summoning again. And the next turn I can hope to go summoning plus Grey Merchants if I draw another land. Opponent bolts me down to 9. Bolts me down to 6. And their hand is double Amrakul and a Cryptic Command, so opponent's playing a Through the Breach Amrakul deck. Alright, well we could die at any point here, but at least I get to Fatal Push the Snapcaster Mage. Another Cryptic Command in hand is also bad news, since that means I won't resolve the next big play I try to make. Can hope they counter my summoning, and I get to resolve the second one. That wouldn't be so bad. Alright, well, hopefully they go for it here. Counter draw. And play another one. And then I guess I'll play the Plague Engineer. Could name Goat, could name Human, naming Eldrazi, probably not the best idea. Uh, let's go with Goat, even though naming Human for Snapcast or I guess Wizard would also work, would be reasonable too. But if I draw another Troll, I want to be able to pressure them right away. And then next turn we can hope to unload some Grey Merchants. Uh-oh. Five mana, through the Breach, put Samarkul into play, and we're dead. Alright, well... Those uh, Cryptic Commands bought my opponent just enough time before I could deploy my Grey Merchants onto the next game here. Missing a land drop despite drawing two cards per turn was also unfortunate since that kind of restricted what I could do. My hand was very powerful with all those Grey Merchants, but only being able to play one spell per turn into a Cryptic Command doesn't feel great. But I do get to bring in four Collector Brutality to take away Instance and Sorceries, so that should help. Don't mind the Fulminator Mage to slow down my opponents. And could also consider Spell Bomb for Snapcaster, although it's pretty narrow. What don't I like? Fatal Push is pretty bad in this matchup. Even though my opponent could have some creatures. Liliana's still okay for the discard mode. The Brutality also helps against their burn plan. Demon's probably a little bit too slow for this one, so I don't mind cutting it. Inquisition's not at its best, since the most high impact cards for my opponent are pretty expensive, so I could see shaving to Inquisition since now we have four Brutalities as well. So yeah, let's give this a shot. Just uh, as much disruption as possible would like to be on the play. And we've got a No Lander, we'll have to Mulligan. Alright, I guess I'll keep this. And I can put an Urborg on the bottom since it's legendary. So that works out. And do I want to cycle a Baron more on turn one? Probably not, I'm probably just going to play it tapped. I can always sack the Silent Clearing if I'm flooding, and I might need to get up to 5 mana for Grey Merchant if I don't draw Heartless Summoning. I've got the Knight's Whisper for more card draw, so I think I'm okay just playing the Baron more tapped. 
so it doesn't come back to bite me later. It's gonna be a steam vents untapped, so either an opt or maybe a spell snare. Well, I'm gonna just have to jam this Night's Whisper and hope it resolves. Usually wanna delay playing Urborg for as long as possible, since sometimes it helps the opponent if they have a fetch land they don't want to sacrifice right away. And it is an opt. Alright, Phyrexian Arena is gonna be a nice one. Give us more resources to work with. Now I think I'll play the Urborg. Arena resolves. Opponent did nothing with two mana. And let's see what we can find. Thoughtseize is pretty good here. Probably just play land Thoughtseize in case of a mana leak. And their hand is double spell snare, snapcaster, and through the breach. Well, spell snare is no longer super effective, but I guess it can counter my knight's whisper still. So I probably want to take the through the breach and leave them with snapcaster, double spell snare. They can go snapcaster opt end of turn, but that's okay. So they must have drawn these spell snares pretty late, otherwise they probably would have countered the knight's whisper. Maybe they're keeping it specifically for my uh, enchantment instead, which is also possible. So I guess I don't mind casting the Night's Whisper here, since if they counter it, then they can no longer go for Snapcast or Opt. So we kind of mess up their curve a little bit. And yeah, opponent's just going to let it resolve now. Did pick up the summoning, but I don't necessarily need it. I can just start hard casting my 5 drops. So opponent's going to go for Snapcast or Opt. They need to fetch up an extra blue source to do so leaving them with double spell snare and an island. Alright, let's see what we pick up. Lots of trolls. So do we make our opponent pay the troll toll, or do I play Grey Merchant first out of uh, fear of getting burnt out by, like, Bolt, Snapcaster, Bolt? I think I'll play Grey Merchant first here. And if I resolve one Grey Merchant, I can uh, afford to play the Trolls. So we're up to 14 now, and Grey Merchant can block any incoming Snapcasters. Opponent with a Charm end of turn, drawing two cards. Collective Brutality could also come in handy, but it does get tagged by this uh, Spell Snare. I think I'm just gonna play the Troll. Pretty likely to run into a cryptic command, but uh, don't really have another choice here. There's command. So I could cycle the Baron more, or I could play it in case I miss on drawing a land next turn. And what that does for me is I get to maybe play the Heartless Summoning. If they spell snare it, I can still play a 5 drop afterwards. And if it resolves, it's going to be easier to double spell. So I think I'm just playing this. And saying go. And I don't think I want to trade damage. Opponent finds another land. Inquisition is pretty valuable. So I have 7 mana available. So I don't quite have enough mana to do everything I want here. I would ideally both Brutality and Inquisition to take away the two spell snares and then resolve the Heartless Summoning and play. One of my 5 drops for 3 mana, but I'm 1 mana short of doing so. Probably casting Brutality, taking away an instant and sorcery, and I don't think I want to escalate, since otherwise they just counter it and I waste my card. And then if they spell snare this, they can no longer Cryptic Command, and then I can just play one of my 5 drops, hopefully. So that gets spell snared. And now Grey Merchant or Troll, probably Troll first. And then we can Grey Merchant next turn. Ooh, opponent fetches for Mystic Sanctuary, putting through the Breach back on top. So that probably means they have Emrakul in hand, and we're about to get comboed next turn. Remand also very good against us if we don't have summoning in play. I could have also considered just like casting the summoning into the Spell Snare, and if they Spell Snare, then I can make the same play where I play one of my 5 drops instead of trading for the Collective Brutality but I kind of wanted to keep the summoning to maybe try and resolve it next turn. Alright, Serum Visions, maybe 
So they didn't have Amrakul in hand yet. Alright. So we still get to live. Fulminator also looking good. So we'll lead with Inquisition to know what's up. Opponent has double through the breach. Cryptic. Snapcaster Spell Snare Blood Moon. Well, the Blood Moon is not too effective. They still have Cryptic Command at the ready, so they can counter my Fulminator if I try and go for it. If I take Spell Snare, they can Snapcaster Spell Snare, so I should probably just take the Snapcaster. The goal here is to try and Fulminator the Steam Vents to prevent them from comboing, as they will be missing the Fifth Land and the Red Mana until I guess they play Blood Moon to turn the Sanctuary into a Red Source. But yeah, let's take Snapcaster. And then I can play Summoning. If they counter this with Spell Snare, that opens up the window for Fulminator Mage. So now I can play Troll. Which I'm guessing is going to get Cryptic. And then we can Fulminator to blow up the Steam Vents, hopefully. So there's Cryptic, returning the Snapcaster to hands. Grey Merchant can hit for one. And I'm just going to blow up the land right away here. Hopefully that prevents us from getting comboed next turn. And now we can leverage Phyrexian Arena and these Grey Merchants to close out the game. Opponent found another Red Source. Untapped Steam Vents, maybe another Cryptic Commands. A Liliana and Engineer. Now playing Liliana and Plossing not too effective since my opponent has a bunch of dead cards in hand. So instead, let's play the troll. Snapcaster on her man, perhaps. Troll gets remanded. But now I can replay troll. Opponent gets some goats. And get to play Plague Engineer, naming Goats. And opponent packs it in. Alright, on to game 3 against Through the Breach, Amrakul. Think we're still okay with our sideboard plan. Spell Snares are annoying. Inquisition can take them away as well as Snapcaster, but I don't want to overload on them as we saw in that game. Opponent has a lot of expensive cards. Blood Moon doesn't do much against us since we have a lot of basic swamps, so not too concerned about that. So yeah, I think we just stay put. And as we saw in the second game, once we get the summoning in play, it becomes a lot easier to double spell and fight through the opponent's counter spells. This hand lacks any form of interaction, which is a problem. So I don't know if I can keep. This hand's also pretty bad, but we do have a Liliana to interact a little bit. And I don't really want to go to five, so I guess we'll keep this and put a swamp on the bottom. So hopefully my opponent's hand has a Blood Moon in it, and a bunch of Spell Snares. Well, now I guess I don't want him to have a Spell Snare. I'm just gonna jam. Resolves. Do have the Fulminator now to blow up a land, although my opponent's is probably going to keep this fetch land uncracked for the time being, so I can't interact with Fulminator. They do have a lot of basic lands, so Fulminator not always too effective. I think we're just playing Liliana here. That might get uh, a response. Right, resolves, we can start plussing. Don't really mind discarding a land, given that we have summoning in play, since I can cast all my 5 drops with uh, 3 mana in play. Discards Emrakul, which shuffles their graveyard back into their library. So that means Snapcaster Mage can't flash back a Serum Visions now. Land 4 is a Sulphur Falls. So now we gotta watch out for Cryptic Commands, of course. Start by plussing Liliana. I guess I'll get rid of the Plague Engineer here. And then I'm okay if my opponent counters a Troll, since I think the Fulminators are gonna be more important for me. Alright, Troll resolves. Opponent gets some goats. Now, of course, it's a bit awkward that I discarded the Plague Engineer, but so be it. Get to attack with a troll. So I might get comboed. Now, I am at 20, so Amrakul doesn't actually kill me on the spot. 
and land means I get to double Fulminator before plussing Liliana. Now, plussing Liliana with an empty hand runs into Cryptic Bounce Liliana, but I imagine if my opponent had a Cryptic, they probably would have countered Troll last turn. So let's start by attacking and see what happens. Opponent takes 7, down to 4. Play Fulminator. Resolves. Play another Fulminator. And plus Liliana. Now since we're in the second main phase, I can't really do the thing where I blow up their land and then go to the next phase to deplete any floating mana from their mana pool. Put on Discard's Lightning Bolt. And we'll start going to town on their lands. And yeah, opponent concedes, showing a hand of Emrakul and two lands. Alright, that's gonna be it for me today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.